I started to ask myself, why aren't there any Nigerian heroes? A lot of the things that have been demonized over time are not really what we thought they were. The future of the African comic industry seems bright, but I would also add that the future of the African comic industry is already today. We're trying to get the story more mainstream and more connected with the average African or Black American child out there. kingdom lost the time and text, ruled all of our Kibulan, the garden we now call Africa. I believe it is decided. We are doing this for our kingdom, our people, and our city. I've been drawing comics for a very long time, since I've been a kid, probably like around 10 or 8. The idea was to get very good at drawing comics and then probably draw comics abroad for other countries and things like that. And I wasn't fully aware of the representation issue until a friend of mine asked me, oh, why aren't there any Nigerian heroes? And that single question has deviated me on this and led me on this path. But I started to ask myself, um, why? aren't there any Nigerian heroes and I decided you know instead of complaining about it let me do something about it and that's how I started to create Nigerian comic book heroes and I started to influence people who are also in that line and that has been my mission ever since to change the narrative of people assuming Africa doesn't need heroes or Africa can't have heroes as a whole. Comics are like the groundwork for the storytelling, they are the foundation, right? Because I have a very, very strong foundation in comic books, now I'm operating in a field where I can fully immerse the reader, I can grab their attention, I can soak them into a world that they've never been to. The game we're working on uh, right now called Voodoo, um, it's a third-person shooter game and it is about a bounty hunter, right? He just catches criminals for pay. I'm fascinated by that journey from the simple to the most complex point because it mirrors, you know, how I've lived my life just from one simple point where I'm just a normal boy just drawing sketches on a piece of paper and then now I'm bouncing from like, you know, being co-founder in um, a comic book studio to like doing games and just basically doing something extraordinary at each step or each stage of my life. Get up. We used to hallow and respect the blood in our veins and the color of our skin. We were once the proud tamers of the garden land, lords of Akebu land. The future of the story is very interesting and vast because it's a whole universe in itself. Um, that's what the legend of Akebu in itself. What we believe people can look forward to seeing is um, Africa, as we know, has been war-ridden, you know, and it's been happening internally for a very long time. And today, there are still pockets of small wars um, happening, you know, from tribal to ethnic to location to disputes to economical. And what we want to do is tap into that and make people realize the consequences of those actions. We're, we're more or less looking at the entire continent and the great men that existed on, you know, from this continent and imagine like what they could have achieved if they were all working together and what we can achieve if we start working together. My visions are becoming repetitive and vicious. Each time I see that city laid waste and a queen stands in the center of it all. <sighs> in terms of production, like everything about the Legends of Archibald series is bootstrapped. Budget is always a contributing factor, especially when you're trying to do things from this side of the world. But we're happy that the community, our 
entity community work behind us, even with the limited resources and equipment that we had in shooting. Now, we had gone ahead to get a motion capture suit from XMs, right, and some materials, you know, and equipment that we needed for the shoot. But still, it's still very much bootstrapped at this early stage. You know, so in some places, you're pretty much making makeshift gears to get everything done. As an indie studio based in Africa, it's hard for VCs or or people to invest in you because until they see a finished product, right? So most of the stuff that I've done, that I've achieved up until now is self-funded. The team right now is so small and that's a challenge in itself because when you're making games, you need a bunch of people. My Choose your destiny. Hmm. Another thing we want them to, you know, take away from this is to understand that a lot of the things that have been demonized over time are not really what we thought they were. And by seeing the humanity in some of these characters, we get to see even ourselves, we get to see where certain things that we even do today came from and how we can learn from that history. Stoop low and ally with common men? I see you have lost your pride and common sense, just as you have lost your kingdom. You will die. The business side of it, it's become a lot easier to uh, market and push your product out there because of the advancements of technology. Right now, you can use your social media accounts to reach thousands of people that normally back then, if you are Andy Ackman, you wouldn't be able to reach these people except for if you published in a newspaper or somehow you had enough funding to publish three to 4,000 copies or a million copies at a go. The future that we are trying to see of uh, comics everywhere and comics being the norm is already here. What now remains is that those who are interested need to tap into the market now and, you know, exploit whatever collaborations that they can and we're already seeing that we're seeing it with the likes of um, comic republic and universal we're seeing uh, Kisasimoto that uh, just recently came out you know things like that animation for us is a first start you know we're trying to get the story more mainstream and more connected with our viewers right but there's a whole lot you know in terms of connecting with the average african or black american child Right, and also with the Afro child out there, you know, educating them about Africa in a different format. You know, you don't need to be educated about you know this beautiful continent from the four walls of a classroom. The other ones, they come.